showers of blessing.
a fool to wander astray. Straight is the deep and narrow the way, but now I have traded the wrong for the right. Oh
you may be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. My God, what a wonderful worship service. What a presence of the Lord is in this house tonight. Amen, 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 amen. I'm telling you now, we may be one of five that's having church tonight, but I just can't help but feel like if we'll just meet together one more time, that the Lord will certainly honor our faith and will speak and minister in this place. And I feel the anointing of God tonight. Praise the Lord. I feel the Spirit of Christ in this house. And I glorify Him and I magnify Him. Praise the Lord. I thank God for His presence today. I thank God for the service this morning. But I'm anticipating even better tonight. Amen. And thank you for being here. Brother Tyrone, bless you. It's good to see you come in. Brother, we need all the help we can get tonight. we got a lot of folks out this weekend, and we are so happy to see you in the presence of the Lord and give your mother our love. We miss seeing her, and it's good to see you in the house tonight. Amen. Would you all be so kind as to prepare an offering to bring to the Lord at this time? We bless you and thank you for your support of the work of God, and we honor you as you give tonight in Jesus name. Amos the third chapter and the 11th uh, verse 
and I may read a couple of verses prior to that. And there's the other one I want is Jeremiah 23. I'm going to read in Amos 3, and then I'm going to read in Jeremiah 23. Praise the Lord. And I just happened to go by Jeremiah first. So I'm going to stick me a paper in there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amos chapter 3. And uh, I don't want 11. I want 7. And I want to start out. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to start in verse 6. I shall a trumpet be born in a city and the people not be afraid or that is not run or respond to the sound of that trumpet. Now how many of you understand when the Bible talks about a trumpet it's not talking about bugler boys blowing a horn. But it's talking about a message. It's talking about a certain sound. It's talking about a supernatural prophetic sound. And how many know in the book of Joel, the thing that started the whole restoration revival that is coming on this end time is to blow the trumpet. Glory to God. Where at? In Zion. Zion is the high calling. That's glory. That's the called out ones. That's the ecclesia of God. How many in this hour are feeling or stirring in your spirit? How many when you go to prayer there's an expectancy going up like a like mercury in a thermometer? It's just getting rising higher and higher. What's happening? God is, is sending a sound into the earth. Yes. Woo. And when he sends a sound, it stirs up the people. And we get over there in 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, and find out that the Holy Ghost is a given a trumpet sound. And that some people that's not flowing in the Holy Ghost, he said, if a trumpet gives forth a what kind of sound? Uncertain sound. How many believe there's a lot of preaching going on that's got people shaky and uncertain about things? Woo, glory to God. That's the reason you ought to leave politics out of the pulpit. Amen. We're not up here to give a political report. And get everybody tuned in on the newspaper articles. We're up here to blow a trumpet in Zion. And that trumpet sends out a sound. And that sound causes people to get stirred. Glory to God. Why that I'll quote a little bit more of it out of Joel 2. He said, Blow a trumpet in Zion. Sound and what? Alarm <coughs> in my holy mountain. Glory to God. He goes on to say, let the bride come out of her chamber. <laughs> Amen. Let the bride, you know I've, I've taught you for years that the bride hears the trumpet. The bride has an ear to hear. And so the Bible said, sanctify ye fast. Call a solemn assembly. Let the priest weep. Amen. Between the porch and the altar. Come on now. And what happens when all this starts? All that is is God saying, when I blow that trumpet, I'm calling the bride to intercession. And when she gets to intercede, something's going to come up, a great army. Oh, glory to God. An end time army of believers filled with the Holy Ghost with prophetic utterance in their mouth. Glory to God. And he said they're going to be like a great troop. And they're going to rush upon the city. And they're going to run upon the walls. And they're going to carry my word. Glory to God. Do you understand tonight that more than this book, there's a word in you called a rain of word. And you carry that word tonight. And when you start running with that word, then you're going all the way back to Habakkuk, the third chapter, where he said, I'm going to stand on the watch. I'm looking to see. I'm waiting for something. Somebody said, what are you waiting on, prophet? I'm waiting to see what the Lord will say to me. And once he heard it, he said, write down the vision. Make it plain. Well, glory. So that he may run that readeth it. 
Brother, when you get that running in your feet, that's the prophet spirit on you. Elijah got that running in his feet and he outran Ahab's chariot all the way to Jezreel. Glory to God. And we see places in the Bible where sometimes one is running and another overtakes them. That happened in David's day, did it not? One was running with a message, but another overtook. Well, glory. How many know that there's an overtaken anointing that's going to overtake and come upon us? The Bible talks about the blessing of the Lord not only coming on you, but overtaking you. Hallelujah. So here in the book of Amos, and Amos was such a prophet, and he prophesied, and even the priest and the king, and Amaziah and them came to him and said, we don't want you to prophesy here. We don't want you to prophesy in Jerusalem. Come on now. Everybody don't want the, <laughs> don't want prophecy. Some people don't want the spirit of, of prophecy in the church. But if you don't, then I must tell you that there's no testimony of Jesus because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And the sign when God says, Thus saith the Lord, I feel the anointing tonight. Hallelujah. When God says, Thus saith the Lord, you better understand that the spirit of the living Christ is in the midst of the church and God is orchestrating things to be done according to His own counsel and His own will. So can a trumpet be blown and people not be afraid of that is people not getting to run and getting responding. Start moving. Something starts happening. And then look at the next verse. He said, uh, uh, shall, shall there be evil in the city of the Lord if not done it? And surely the Lord, God, come on now, will do nothing. But He revealeth His secrets unto his servants the prophets what a verse <laughs> Ooh, glory to God surely the Lord will do nothing now we go back there and catch that other end of the ladder of that verse 6 because it says shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it now some people will read that and they'll say God should do an evil on people that ain't what it means you have to learn what them literal Meaning is, you did need to get you a good center reference Bible that'll tell you what some of them things mean. It said, shall there be evil in the city and the Lord not do nothing about it? That's what it means in the literal. How many know that if there's any evil around and that trumpet gets to blowing, God's going to get to moving. And when God gets to moving, they'll come in one way, but they'll flee. They'll scatter. Can you say amen? And then look at verse 8 finally. The lion hath roared. Woo, glory. Who will not fear the Lord God hath spoken? Who can but prophesy? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, they tell me in the forest when the lion utters his roar, it sets a scene across that whole forest. Every animal shudders and hollers and and carries on and, and it's just alarmed at the sound of that roar. But I believe that part of Brother Joel's prophecy said that the Lord was going to roar out of Zion. Hallelujah. And I believe tonight that God has set a roaring forth in the church. Of, amen. A rumbling and a roaring of the Holy Ghost that is shaking the foundation. Everything that can be shaken and being shut in this hour. And the only thing being left is the kingdom. Glory to God. And we don't have to worry about the shaking because we're in the kingdom. And everything that is in the kingdom is going to stand. Glory to God. And everything that's not in the kingdom is going to be removed. But the lions are roaring tonight. It's the line of the what? Tribe of Judah. And the Bible prophesied and said, 
Judah is like a lion crouching down sleeping who dared to rouse him up who dares to stir him up I'll tell you this hour the Holy Ghost is stirring up a praise in this earth that is going to shake everything glory to God according to the book of Revelation when that sound of your voice gets in tune with the sound of heaven's voice it'll sound like the voice oh glory to God of what many waters I hear that rumbling in the spirit tonight and surely the Lord God all of this will happen but the Lord wants us to know that he intends to let us in on it surely the Lord God will do nothing he ain't going to move without us oh he come down three of them two angels and one was God Jehovah came into Abraham's tent door they came for two reasons. One, they came to announce to Abraham that the seed was going to come through the womb of his bride. We'll save that for a Wednesday night message. But the second thing they come to tell him was that we're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible said, the Lord said, shall I hide this thing? Well, glory to God from Abraham. He couldn't hide it from Abraham because Abraham was a praying man of faith. And God is not going to hide nothing from us when we're praying people who believe by faith in his promise. And God so listened and hearkened to Abraham that he said he would spare the city. Abraham interceded till he got down to ten. Righteous people left in that city. Come on now. And the Bible lets us know that even though he didn't find ten because of Abraham standing in the gap, he still spared Lot and he still spared his children because the Lord would not hide this thing from Abraham. I don't believe it's God's desire to hide anything from us because we are a people of the secret place. Can you say amen? And the secret place is the holy of holies. Uh, it's, the, it's the shadow of the ark of God in our midst. Uh, and Amos said, when a trumpet blows, the whole city is stirred. Well, glory. Now, we read, when we get into the book of Numbers, that the Lord done away with one horn and brought in two trumpets of silver. And silver, of course, is what? Redemption. Amen. And he began to blow them trumpets, and you ought to study the order of that. One of them called the princes, and one of them called the elders. Well, glory. And one of them called the rest of the crew. We find out in Exodus, that God blew a trumpet three times for certain things. He blew a trumpet to announce every feast. He blew a trumpet when it was time to move and journey by the cloud. And he blew a trumpet every time he wanted to call the assembly together. Well, praise the Lord. Now, how many of you know Hebrews said, forsake not? the assembling of yourselves together. I know some of your church buddies haven't read that scripture yet, but it is in the Bible. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Come on. And in my language, what the writer said was, even though some are. But anyway, he said, we're supposed to assemble all the more as we what? See the day approaching. Now, he's talking about the day we're talking about, the day of the Lord, the day when God begins to do this mighty work. And so how many know that we can get ready because in spite of what it looks like on the atmospheric surface, God's getting ready to assemble her that had halted. That's what the book of Isaiah says. I will assemble her that halted. And some of them's going to come running and shouting. And some of them's going to come with a hook. I'm just telling you the word now. Uh, a hook uh, 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 in their nose and a bridle in their mouth. Is that the word? You can do it the easy way or you can have it the hard way. 
But either way, God's going to have His way. Can you say praise the Lord? How many have ever gone the easy way? How many have ever gone the hard way? Come on now. Now how many know you don't regret none of it because God took care of you? Hallelujah. Well, the Bible said when we got time for them to assemble, they blow the trumpet. Then when we read about the Feast of Tabernacles, we find out it is a Feast of Trumpets. And the seventh trumpet is the long blast. Glory to God. And when the long blast was given, they knew to prepare for war. Amen. And I can tell you now that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Uh, come on now, but against powers and principalities and, and spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness in this world. Come on, that which is to come. And yet we read on and find out that the very heart of it all is wicked what? Imaginations. The Lord's declaring war on this old flesh. <laughs> And like it or lump it, it's going down. But your spirit's rising up. And so how many is with me so far? And I like the long blast because when it's finished, the mystery's finished. That's what the book of Revelation says. And after the seventh trumpet, the mystery is finished. Come on, somebody. And what mystery is that? Well, I've been trying to tell you for three weeks and one of you's got a mystery yeah. on the inside of you that's unfolded. Yes. Well, glory. And brother, sister, you better know one thing, that if that trumpet sounds loud enough and long enough and hard enough, you're going to experience a catching away. Yeah. Is that the Scriptures? At the sound of the what? Last trump. What's the last trump? The seventh trump. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And you're going to be caught up. And I don't mean caught up. You don't have to get no wings. Yeah. It ain't that kind of catching up. There's another environment yeah. called the Holy Ghost. It's the spirit of the breath of God. Are you hearing me? I've been caught up in that environment. Have you ever been on an airplane? Hello? Then you've been caught up in the natural environment. Praise the Lord. And when you got up above them natural clouds, you know what you found? More sky. And when it got time to come back to the earth, you just made a descent right down. Amen. And you didn't get caught up. You caught up in the natural. You didn't get changed. You, well, glory. You come down, back with the same feelings and the same mind and just went and picked up your luggage and went on your way. But the catching up I'm talking about tonight, you're going to be changed. Well, glory. <laughs> something's going to happen to you. Something's going to fall off of you. But something's going to come on you. Hallelujah. I said glory. And so all of this the Lord said I'll do. I'll blow it. I'll sound it. Lines will roar. People will be stirred. Change will come. It'll be a mighty move of God, but he said, I want you to know that I'm not going to do it without telling you about it. I'm going to reveal it. Oh, hallelujah, unto my servants, the prophets. Can you say praise the Lord tonight? Glory to God. Now look at that verse in Jeremiah real briefly. Just one verse only there. 23, chapter 23, verse 19. Hallelujah. 23 and, uh, no, 18. 23 and 18. For who have stood in the counsel of the Lord and have perceived and heard His word? And who have mocked His word and heard it? Now I want to read it with that as it reads in the literal. Who has 
hath stood in the secret of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word. Somebody say amen. Do you believe you're standing in the secret? Yes. Counsel of God. Amen. Look now, I wasn't going to necessarily read this, but it might help you to see it in Psalm 91. Yeah. And read these words that we are so familiar with. He that dwelleth in the secret place yeah. of the Most High yeah. shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. Glory to God. Glory to What did the Lord appear to Abraham and said? I am the one. Almighty one. How many know what the Almighty one is? That's the El Shaddai. The God of plenty. The God who is more than enough. The God Almighty. Amen to God. He said, I will say of the Lord, He is my what? Refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God and in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers and under His wings. Glory to God shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flieth by day. Glory to God. Nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness or the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh unto thee only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see reward of the wicked because thou hast made the Lord which is thy refuge even the most high my habitation glory to God there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling are you hearing it tonight? For he shall give his angels a charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. You shall tread on the lion, the adder, and, thou, uh, and the young lion and the dragon. Come on now. We sing it. No dragon shall abide. Shall you what? Trample under feet because he has set his love on me. I will deliver him and set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Well, glory. Jeremiah 33, 3 said, call unto me. Call unto me. Call unto me. What will he do? Answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know. And I don't know if I helped you or not, but I preached me happy. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He shall call unto me and I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. And with a long life. Well, I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And Jeremiah's over here asking us who has stood in his secret, who has heard and perceived his word. Can you say amen? One of the things you need to understand is the word mystery in the Bible. In the Greek is the word mysterion. You know what it means literally? To shut your mouth. To shut the mouth. To keep a secret. Mm. Now some human beings can't keep a secret. They ain't no good at it. Hallelujah. I personally think that a real good hearted person can know a thing all the days of their life and never say a word about it. But some folks get the itching to tell it so bad. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. I remember Mother Heflin saying that when she was a 
young teenager, one of the people in the church had backslid. Let me tell you something, folks. If that's what's going on, that ain't never a time to gossip. That's a time to pray. And that ain't a time to pepper nobody with questions. It's a time to seek the face of God. And Sister Heffern said some way or another, I just thought I had to tell my mother that man backslid. And she was getting on the streetcar in Washington. They were coming home from church. And she said, Lord, if you want me to tell mother that, let her sit by me when we get on the streetcar. But the mother didn't sit by her. She went across the aisle and sat down by her brother. But oh, she said, the more that streetcar started up that hill, the more I just knew I had to tell her. And she said, I ran over to her and said, did you know so-and-so backslid? And her mother said, I know it before anybody knew it. But you ought to have done what I did. You ought to have kept your mouth shut. Well, glory. And prayed about it and asked the Lord about it. And Sister Heffern said it grieved her and hurt her heart so bad, the reality that she had spoke against that brother that it took her quite a few days to get out from under that burden because she knew she had spoke against one. Come on now. Oh my Lord, but have you believed, do you believe God will trust you with His secrets? Come on now. Do you believe God's got a mystery in you? Oh, the mystery, the shutting of the mouth, the keeping of the secret. But there is a time to be initiated into a deeper realm of God. And when you get initiated into the deeper realm of God, He'll do with you what He did with the disciples in Matthew the 13th chapter after speaking of the parable of the sower and the reaper. He took them to the backside of the mountain and there He expounded unto them what He said. And Jeremiah said, there's somebody that's going to enter the secret counsel of God. And when they do, they're going to hear and perceive His Word. Now, I want you to know that the whole tide turned on Job by his friends because Job talked like he knew something they didn't know. And they thought they were it. And for Job to talk like he knew something they didn't know. They already had it fixed. God was punishing Job. God was chastising Job. Job had secret sin in his life. That's what they thought. Read the book. They accused him of being unfaithful to God. Amen. And they've had it all figured out. But when they got through condemning him, Job kept preaching. Come on now, church. They didn't know how to deal with that because they intended to go there to shut him up. Well, glory. You've got to understand whether we're talking allegorical or literal. The picture presented is a man so full of the wisdom of God that the whole city rose to his feet when Job entered into the gate. When he recalled his days of glory, he said that he was the words in the mouth of the young men. He said when he opened his mouth, everybody shut theirs. He said when he came in the gate, even the elders rose to respect him. He said, a candle shined on my head. I washed my steps with butter. The rocks poured me out rivers of oil. My glory was fresh in me. If my bow was renewed in my hand and his dew lay on my branch all night long. That's what the man of God said about himself. Are you hearing me? He began to recall those days and the way he started it was, oh, that I were as in the days of my youth. So from a young man, well, glory. I don't know, you get to preaching that too much and you can't help but preach Jesus. From a young man in the temple when he was 12 years old, he began to speak of the secret and hidden things of the Lord so that he answered every priest in that house. Well, come on, somebody. Oh, I want to open my mouth and have an answer. 
And if I can't be part of the, the solution, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. If I can't say something that's going to change it, then the best thing for me to do is strengthen where I can and go home and get myself at a place where I can hear from God. Amen. And you say, praise the Lord. I never will forget. We had an uncle, and we called him Pop. And, 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 and his name was Uncle Melvin. And oh, was he rough and tough and mean. Amen. And uh, Lord. And my granddad would visit him just like he was a church member. And, so, and even when he had evangelists in, he'd carry them over there with him. And they'd sit on the front porch. And sometimes he said things that wasn't very churchy. Yep. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> this is neither here nor there, but he chewed the back and he always had a jaw that big. I mean, he looked like half his face was full. And he'd sit on that porch and he even looked mean. And he, and, he, and he came down with cancer and he got so sick and one day, I was sitting in the living room across the street. I never forgot what now, what all was going on, but oh, hallelujah. My granddad came running in that room with a vision in his head. God had told him. Yeah. Lady, he'd been over here praying, and he got in on the secret. And the Lord said, if you'll go now, I'll save Melvin. And glory to God, he came over there and said, son, get in the car. We've got to go see your pop. And we got in the car and we drove over there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the only one there staying with him that day was his daughter, Mamie. And he said to me and Mamie, you all stay right here in this living room. And we sat down in that living room and he went in that room and you ought to have heard the wisdom of God and the counsel of the Lord. It wasn't five minutes before Pop was crying and calling on the name of the Lord. He'd never called on God except to say something mean. But the Lord bailed him down and he got all right. Amen. What happened? He got in on a council meeting. He got in in the secret. Amen. There is an answer to every dilemma you are dealing with tonight and not dealing with tonight. And we can pray ourselves in a realm of the Spirit where God can give us a word of wisdom and show us what to do. Amen. Are you listening to me? I'm getting ready to close it out, so you better get it if you don't get it. It's that God wants to speak a mystery to you that will fix this thing and fix it forever and forever and forever. Hallelujah. And the more they criticized, the more Job preached. And they said, Job, one of them found in the 15th chapter of Job said to him, Who are you? Have you heard God's secret? Do you know something we don't know? Amen. And God began to counsel Job. And he counseled him by asking the question that he asked the man in the beginning. The first question God ever asked man was, where are you? And he began to ask Job over and over again, chapter after chapter, where were you? Where were you when I? Oh, come on, shanda my Where were you when I flung the stars from my fingertips? Where were you when I told the sea you can't come no further? Where were you when I spoke the morning in its place? Come on now. And then he got real personal with him. He said, where were you when the sons of God sang together? And the, when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Come on, somebody. He was telling Job, what you got in you didn't come from your mother's womb. It came from the foundations of the world. Can you say amen? Now David said, he that dwelleth. When David got the ark home to Zion, he did not put a veil up. That ark stayed open in a makeshift shelter temple. And for once, in all of Israel's life, 
They could go by that place and behold the glory of the Lord. David, unlike any other king in the word of God, went in before that ark daily and nightly. Are you listening to me? Why? Because he was a king and a priest. We know he was because every time as a king he got in a battle, he always turned over to the priesthood and got an ephod and put it on him. That means he went before the Lord in intercession. And David wrote it, He that dwelleth, because Zion was the capital hill of it all. Zion was the place where it happened. Zion where he took the stronghold and it was called the city of David. And Zion is where the ark was carried to when it left the house of Obed-Edom and David placed it there and appointed priests and singers who would worship the Lord day and night. And when David would bow in the presence of that ark, the wings of those cherubim would be over his shadow in him. And he began to go in the spirit and write that psalm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. He said he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. What was under the wings? The mercy seat. What was on the mercy seat? The blood. What dwelt between the mercy seat and the wings of the cherubim? The Shekinah glory of God. What was David saying? He said, I'm going to live day and die in the glory. I'm going to sit under the shadow of the Almighty. <laughs> I'm going to rest here in this pavilion of His presence. This is my refuge. This is my fortress. You ain't got no refuge or fortress outside of the glorious presence of God. Amen. That's your covering. Yes. Now then, people get in ministry and all of this religion so and so is my covering yes. and I'd hate to know any of you had to depend, depend on my humanity yes. as your covering and before you get so righteous, vice versa. I'd hate to know I had to depend on any of you to be my covering in the natural. I know we can cover one another with prayer, but I'm going to tell you now, there ain't no covering outside of the glory of His manifested presence on your life. When men and women walk in the presence of God, then there is nothing outside of that realm that can overpower anything. I don't care if it's poverty, sickness, devils, demons, hardships, struggles, strife, jealousy, malice, envy, all of that cannot cross the line of the glory and the presence of the Lord. That's why I tell you all the time, there ain't no devils around here, folks. They ain't coming in here. The glory of the Lord is in here. The presence of God is in here. Hallelujah! And David said, I trust in His wing. I trust in His shadow. I trust under the covering of His feathers. Glory to God. So what is he saying? He is saying this is the secret. The secret is to get lost in the presence of God. The secret is to stay under the anointing. Anointed people get results every time. And you say praise the Lord. Knowing how to sense His presence. Are you listening to me? I can be cutting grass and God may want to give me some of His secret. Well, glory. And if I yield to His presence, He'll show me something I don't know. I may be walking down the sidewalk and the Lord just nudge me and let me know He wants to tell me something. And all I've got to do is climb up under the shadow of the Almighty and He'll tell me what it is that I need to know. Can you say amen? I said he'll tell me what it is that I need to know. He'll reveal to me what it is that I need to know. He'll show me what it is that I need to know. Hallelujah. There have been some days in this place since I've gotten here. 
that some people were, were doing all their plotting and scheming and the Holy Ghost had put me up here on a Sunday evening and turned my tongue loose and say things through me I didn't plan on saying. Oh, and at the end of the service, I found out something I didn't know. I didn't want to know it, but he wanted me to not be deceived, and he didn't let me be deceived. Are you listening to me? What is it? It's the, it's the presence of God. You can't mess with nobody Amen. that's under the presence of God. You people that are being attacked right now, I want you every day to start declaring, I dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Come on, somebody. His presence is on me. His anointing is on my life. I'm not just anybody. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to fall prey to no bunch of plagues and evildoers. The Bible said they shall not come nigh thy dwelling who hath heard his secret who hath perceived his word. Come on now, surely the Lord, thy God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Can you say amen? amen. Well, glory, let's all stand up and bless the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, let us hear. Lord, let us see. Lord, let us perceive. Lord, let us understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, my God, we praise you. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. We bless your name forevermore. We thank you right now for moving. Amen. We thank you right now for moving. We thank you right now for moving. We thank you for moving back. In it, power, our principality that's coming against the people of God. Lord, clear a path right now. Hold on, my son, Allah, my higher. Clear a path before your people and make a way straight before them in the name of Jesus. Everybody come let me bless you before we go home tonight in the name of the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you, we honor you, we thank you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. We worship you. Amen, 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 amen. I bless my brother. In the name of the Lord, I bless him. I speak your blessing on everything he puts his hand to. And I speak that shadow of the Almighty to cover over him. From head to foot tonight, Lord. Oh, under the shadow. Under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Under the shadow of the Almighty. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Under the shadow of the Almighty. Under the shadow. <laughs>
I trust in them. I trust in them. I trust in them. I trust in you as my refuge. I trust in you as my fortress. I trust in you, the living God. I trust your anointing. I trust your power. I trust your word. Oh my God, I trust you. I rest in you. I rely on you. I decree your word. I declare your name. Ah, glory. You're my strong power. You're my high power. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, we speak over everybody in this house tonight. We speak the favor and the blessings of the overwhelming sense of your presence. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The presence of the Lord is our refuge. Hallelujah. We run to it. We bask in it. We rest in it. In the name of the Lord, we walk in it. We live in it. We sleep in it. Oh Lord, our trust is in thee. Glory, you said he'll call unto me and I will answer him. We call on you tonight. We call on you for the children. We call on you for us and wives. We call on you for the home and for the ministry, for the workplace, for the co-workers and all the other laborers. We call on you tonight. Hallelujah. You said you'll call on me and I will answer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call on you for this house. Let it be a trumpet house. Let it be a house out of which goes the trumpet of Zion. My God, assemble an assembly in this place of warriors. <laughs> Fill this house up with an end time army of God with a message in their mouth. The high praises of God in their mouth and the sword of the word in their hand. In the name of God, send them from the north, from the south and the east and the west, from every direction draw by the anointing of the Spirit tonight. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Fill this place with your glory. Fill this place with your presence. Fill this place with your anointing. Fill this place with power. Fill this place with honor. In the name of the Lord, fill it with miracles. Fill it with signs. Fill it with wonders. In Jesus' name, come on, agree with the word tonight. Glory to God. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, fill these temples and fill this temple. Fill these houses and fill this house. Uh, my God, unplug our ears. Uh, unplug our ears uh, and let us hear what the Spirit is saying. Remove the scales and the blinders from off our eyes uh, and let us see into that secret realm of the Spirit. Uh, let us look into the supernatural of God uh, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Stir up fire and passion, fervor and zeal, flame and holy awe in our spirits. Uh, my God, awaken the church, awaken Zion. Elam Hassan Bahaya, let us shake off the dust and put on our beautiful garments. Glory to God. Let us arise and shine for the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Under the shadow of His wings, I have found peace. Perfect peace.
Praise the Lord. 